This is was my one genuine attempt to say no to more Farsan. Lots of street art, wall art, and of course, lots of autos passing. Maybe I think I'll go shopping. and welcome to sugar spice nice my name is shweta and in this video i am in mumbai i'm just getting started on my mumbai trip i have about 7 days here and it's a mix of a work trip spending time with family meeting friends and i thought of taking you guys with me wherever i can so get ready to spend one entire week in mumbai with me starting off this trip with a visit to the mothership this is cafe madras one of my most favorite restaurants in the city the thing that i really really crave is good south indian food you know the udupi restaurant types but today i thought of having something a little bit more authentic which is why i'm here I'm having my favorite dish ever, puri idli. I skipped the white butter today and the ghee and just had it with the coconut chutney and sambar. Then I moved to the bene masala dosa. The bene masala dosa here is a little small but it's so beautifully crispy and it's greasy like greasy goodness and finally having a bit of pineapple shira. Now the thing in this was it was really nice and warm and not overly sweet but the huge pineapple chunks inside I would have liked them probably smaller slightly softer slightly more well done. So that was like a tad bit disappointing but let me tell you the filter coffee here more than makes up for everything. I don't know when I'll get to visit Cafe Madras again so I'm going to be getting a whole lot of molga podi chutneys to go with me some are for me some are for my family some are for my friends in Ranchi Or velvet vanilla latte and this one is a mocha cookie crumble latte no way So that was about two or three hours, or maybe more, of like lots and lots of work happening in Starbucks. I'm kind of hungry right now because lunch was relatively early and kind of light. But I'm not gonna eat anything right now because I am saving space for the big giant thali that I'm gonna be indulging in. I'm not gonna talk any further about it. I'm just straight gonna get into my cab and rush. at Sri Thakur Bhojnalaya now this is the place that i absolutely love those of you who have been following me for a long time know my love for this thali this is located in kalba devi which is one of the busiest areas in mumbai this is like a business and real commercial hub this restaurant has stood the test of time this is a place actually since 1945 so over 70 years old close to 80 years old it's been a while since i've actually come here probably over a year during amra season and during undyo season is the best time to visit but even if you miss those seasons like how i have over the past one year then it's okay you can come here any time and enjoy their delicious thali they have their daily menu on the blackboard here i'm actually here for dinner normally i always come here for lunch crowd the waiting during lunch time is unusual so i'm actually 10 minutes early before the restaurant is opening all right you guys it's time The hype about this thali is real, and it's not just me who says it. You can check out the number of their Google reviews and TripAdvisor reviews, and also all of the people who love dining in Mumbai. I know will have a sweet spot for this restaurant in their heart. So because I'm the first one here, I don't think I've seen this restaurant this empty ever in my life. So this is just a different kind of feeling when you're like you know at a restaurant which is so busy and buzzing and crowded. This is what the thali is, and you can see the sheer size of this thali. My God, it's big, and it's about to get completely filled. Up. 
So we have different farsan items. There is khasta kachori, there is churi papad, and there is moong dal vada, there is jhokla, there is fryams, papad. There is also salad, kacha papita, raw papaya, chili, pickle, and other pickles and chutneys. And then there are the sabzis. There is bhindi sabzi, black chana sabzi, and this is green tomatoes known as Rajasthani tomatoes. Then we have dal curry, and we also have mango curry. And there is different types of rotis. There is puri, there is chapati, there is those patli. Patli Gujarati rotis that I really like, and there's a whole range of dessert, sweet dish. We have fruit custard, shrikhand, regular shrikhand, and the one with jaggery, and there's gulab jamun. And I was actually really, really surprised when I saw mango here, amras. So this is not Alfonso. Obviously, Alfonso is way past season. This is Raja Puri mangoes. So I made it to some part of amras season at Shrikhakar, and there's puran poli. Look at that puran poli. It is literally swimming in this pot of ghee. And we also have chha. And dahi, and everything that you see on the table right now is unlimited. Actually, I think forgot just how big and grand this is, but this is a good refresher. This is actually going to be my me time in this entire day because I have looked forward to this thali since a year now. So let's just get eating. You guys know when my hair is tied up, I'm serious about eating. Every time I've come here, this thali has always pleased me, made me happy. There's not been a single experience where I've been disappointed. It. Starting with the khasta kachori, so it is kachori mashed, topped with like minty dahi and a little bit of sev. Even after all of this dahi and chutney, you can feel that khasta pan, that flakiness of the kachori. Mm. Dhokla. Honestly, dhokla is tasty by itself. It doesn't really need any chutney. Mm. You guys have to see the size of these dal vadas. They are like really, really cute, really tiny. This and sweet chutney. Mm. They have whole coriander seeds inside. Flavor is just exquisite. I think before going ahead with more farsan, I should have a little bit of the mains. Their sabzis are home style, but. Extremely flavorful, extremely tasty. Not very high on oil. Not overly sweet. I don't know why people feel that for Gujarati thalis that they are really sweet. They're not. This thing I was looking forward to trying the green tomato sabzi. I don't think I've ever had that. Hmm. You can feel the sourness of the tomato. It's kind of been maintained. They've not attempted to make it sweet. And even though crunch feels like you're eating raw tomato in a gravy, but not with that raw feeling. I don't know how to explain this to you. Okay. One. There's no saying no to more farsan. I'm trying the black chana sabzi. Mmm. Gravy is tangy. Really good. Now I'm going to be trying the alu, tomato, mutter sabzi. I got a little bit of peas this time. They just uh, topped up my puran poli with like hot ghee, so I'm tempted to have it right away. Oh my god, this is thick. Mmm. I've saved my appetite of like the entire day for this. So worth it. The good thing is that you get so many different varieties of rotis here, breads. So there's a regular wheat roti, there's bajra, there's jowar, there's puri, and there's also one more thing which I absolutely love here. It's called the biscuit bhakri. This here is the biscuit bhakri. It's this a koki? Is this what? I don't know. But this is topped with a lot of ghee, and all of the ghee inside gives it that flakiness, that crunchiness, and there's no way to describe this. I think if you eat one of this entire biscuit bhakri and one of their entire puran poli, it's very difficult to be able to have any kind of taste in your stomach after that. If there's a combination that I like as much as, if not more than, amras puri, it's shrikhand puri. The shrikhand has. Very apparent, but like really tiny flakes of pista, which is how dry fruits should be in a dish like this. The perfect sourness of hunger, the perfect creaminess. Whenever I come to this restaurant, there is no like limit or there's no barrier that can like save me from overeating. It's very very tough. Even if I eat one round of everything without any repeats, I know I'm more than full. But girls got to repeat everything because that's how you get value for money, right? This was my one genuine attempt to say no to more farsan. I think this is one of the few places that actually gives lachko dal, which is this kind of a pureed dal poured hot on top of rice and ghee. And this has a very very different flavor. Today, I honestly just tried this for the thrill of it. I'm not like the biggest fan of lachko dal, but I like it. Not as much as curry and khichdi. This is all the things that I've managed to finish so far. But usually, I try and finish as much as I can from the plate. It's overindulging. It's not wasting food. It's I don't know what. I still have one more round to go, which is khichdi and curry. Even if it's just one spoon, I don't think I'll ever leave this place without having that. Just realized that I didn't end up trying the jaggery shrikhand. Somehow, I'm finding it sweeter than the regular shrikhand. Interesting.
I think after this level of indulgence, I'm gonna be walking a lot tonight. Plus, I'm gonna be skipping my breakfast and probably even lunch tomorrow. So let's just see what kind of a day we have tomorrow. Bye. Hello and welcome to day 2 in Mumbai. Now this day actually started out a little bit slow because it was raining quite a bit in the morning but thankfully it stopped so I thought of coming to Bandra. Now Bandra for me is a place that I chose to hang out in spite of having a college in South Mumbai. So it's like my comfort place and while there are a lot of places that have been here for very very long and are literally legendary level but there are a lot of like these new age places which I also started enjoying. And and I've come to one such place which is Sapko. It's a really really cool workspace. I actually am putting the workspace uh, description of it before the fact that it's a coffee shop because it's made for people to like come, sit, get their act together, work, read, chill, catch up with friends. It's just a very nice environment for being able to do that. I love the decor, lots of wooden earthy tones and that aroma of coffee everywhere and their display of bread and desserts and sandwiches is just so appetizing. I for one get really really tempted for dessert when I come here but since I've had too much to eat last night I am going to be sticking to just my classic favorite here which is a sourdough toast and some iced coffee I think for me, that texture of your sourdough toast really wins. It's probably one of the best ones that I've found in Mumbai. Very few places do it as good as them and there was nothing on it. It was literally just butter and some sea salt and oh my god, so good. It honestly got me excited about the idea of learning to make sourdough at home. So if you guys have any tips or any videos that I can learn from, then leave those in the comments below. And now I think I'm gonna just chill here for a bit. I'm really taking this trip slow and easy and uh, enjoying some cool me time here. After that, maybe I'll take you guys outside for seeing some really good art in the by lanes of Bandra. So this is like the Bandra by lane walk. I think the beauty of the Bandra by lanes is that everybody who's stayed in Bandra or who's been long enough to be in Mumbai knows their favorite nooks and corners here, their favorite little shops, cafes, whatever you call it here. And I think this is a very different side of Mumbai, a very different side of Bandra. So if you're coming to Mumbai, I definitely recommend this really nice artful walk. There are many such by lanes with cute homes, old style homes, lots of street art, wall art, and of course, lots of autos passing. It kind of rained on our parade earlier, but uh, it's okay, it's become a little bit more nicer, more pleasant. And I think I'm just gonna walk past this lane and see where I feel like going next. Now, if anybody asks me to recommend that one cafe in Bandra, which is a must visit, is pretty decently priced and yet has a very, very high variety of things and a really cool vibe, it's Candies. 80s kids, 90s kids will really remember this place and cherish their memories here. So do I. I've actually made a whole video on this place and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. But if there's a couple of things that I cannot really leave the place without, it's having their iced teas or some of their fun drinks. So today I'm actually having a wild berry iced tea and their tarts. These are really cute 
cute tiny bite size tart i'm going to leave the prices on the screen but i think this is like the perfect dessert size another thing that i can never leave candies without is their chutney sandwiches their chutney is high on garlic really really tasty and they put a very very generous amount of butter making it extremely like creamy and melt in your mouth and they give a tiny packet of butter wafers with sandwiches and these butter wafers are so good they are definitely greasier than other thinner wafers but i really like them Candies definitely has a vibe. You can see how the place is made. It's kind of like an old castle or an old home converted into this restaurant. It's actually quite a huge space by Mumbai standards. So you just keep going up and up and up and there's lots to do. It's actually monsoon right now, so it's not the right time to sit here, but otherwise sitting here, especially in the more pleasant months in Mumbai like November, December, January, definitely feels amazing. And in the evening, this place is lit up. You find a little bit of live music maybe sometimes or just their own music playing and it's a very nice hangout If you visit this place definitely try their pastries cheesecake sandwiches pizza croissants and burgers there's even proper meals here they also have an open salad bar where you can customize your own salad An auto ride in Bandra is mandatory at least for me. I got to go through those slightly sloping pali lanes and now I'm here at Kata Road just chilling. It's kind of become sunny. I mean, I thought it'll be really nice and pleasant and a little bit dull and I'll probably sit here and chill. But it's become sunny so I think there's going to be change of plans. Maybe I think I'll go shopping. I don't know. Since I'm in Bandra, I'm just trying to make the most of it, but this breeze is feeling good. I think I'll walk around for some time. Whenever I see a Miniso, I just have to go there. It originated as a Japanese brand and you get an array of things here right from self-care, beauty, kitchen accessories, home decor, toys, storage, utility and so much more. But I trust myself to pick out gems from everywhere. I got these plastic stick-on hooks and this little car diffuser. This one is at Hill Road in Bandra and it was pretty crowded to be honest, but this area in Bandra is one of the best places for street shopping and you get all kinds of things here right from clothes to bags to shoes and bargaining is the name of the game here. One thing that you cannot leave Hill Road without or at least I can't leave Hill Road without is their sugarcane juice. It's right outside Elko and it's 30 rupees a glass for a supremely delicious and energizing refreshment. Now this is Santa Cruz market where I'm shopping for some jewelry. After spending a lot of time in this store, here is everything that I'm buying. A Kundan necklace, earrings, bangles and I honestly felt like this is a slightly better priced shop as compared to few others in the market. So there is a wedding in the family coming soon which is why I'm going ballistic shopping these things. The shop's name is called Silver Touch and it's pretty close to the Santa Cruz station. But this market overall is also known for all kinds of wedding and occasion wear and festive shopping. So bridal wear, men's wear, festive wear, men's festive wear is all available in shops that are bigger brands and even smaller bespoke ones. Now it's time to eat dinner and I'm heading to a restaurant called Dynasty. It's right next to the same Santa Cruz market. It's probably been around for maybe 25-30 years or more and I used to come here during my college days and that time it was just a place that we really enjoyed and I wanted to relive those memories. I ordered soup, two starters and mains and after eating everything, I was honestly a little disappointed. It's like I built up these expectations in my head that didn't really come through here in terms of taste and service. So yeah, I think I'd give this a miss going forward. had to eat dessert after that disappointing dinner so stop by next door at Selajor. After 10 p.m. every day they have 30% off on their breads, cakes and pastries and that's honestly the best time to get inside this shop and I'm here having the Belgian chocolate pastry. Quite good.
So that was two out of the seven days that I spent in Mumbai. I have more to share with you. Obviously, a massive celebration is coming up in the next vlog with my family. But you have to subscribe to watch it and also hit that notification bell to know when I upload it. Don't forget to like and share this video and comment below your favorite part from the vlog. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.